We're doing a local housing summit in South Dakota to address the housing needs of survivors of trafficking in this local community because South Dakota is so unique in the way that services are spread out. It really is a whole community. We really are looking at bringing these key partners together and understand what are the needs of survivors of human trafficking here in South Dakota and also what does the community already have because they are there are a lot of programs already, there's a lot of resources, but how do they work together in order to really elevate and meet those needs for survivors around housing? I really believe that housing is a challenge area in our community and across our entire state right now. Just the availability of it, affordable housing, um, different programs might be available, but there's a lot of challenges that you have to go through to meet the criteria to be on the program. And so that's why we're here today, is to really learn what some of the barriers are that trafficking victims face when they're trying to find permanent housing or even emergency housing to get into a domestic violence program um, and how we can embrace them in those moments and help them start their journey. Housing is an extreme need on the reservation. We have an 80% housing shortage. So trying to find housing for survivors and youth that are in distress is so challenging. And so I think today looking at how can we find federal, state, private, local resources to expand and meet the needs of our youth for housing, that's, that's critical. Um, you know, we need to provide a safe environment so that our youth can heal and repair from the trafficking trauma that was, they were exposed to. So having a safe environment and a place where they um, don't have to fear being trafficked or being sought out or, or even are they safe when they sleep. So I think, you know, that's, that's so key to what it, the work we do. There's a denial maybe on the tribal side that trafficking is happening on the reservation when it is. And it's historically, it has not been called trafficking, but this isn't something that's new to us. We've had the border town, non-natives who take advantage of native people that are intoxicated or they will buy them drinks or to lower their inhibitions and lower their guard and then they're able to take advantage of those coercion and things like that so today learning where that cross-section is and how do we identify these youth that are transient one of our youth made it from bismarck to eagle butte to rapid city and then ended up at my shelter in kyle you know, identifying how are they getting there, who is helping them, and, and really looking at um, stopping the victimization. I think that there's a lot of misconceptions on what human trafficking looks like in Yankton, South Dakota. When I go out and speak to public service groups or church groups or anybody in general, they have this idea that this 12-year-old is kidnapped out of our mall parking lot in the middle of the night and nobody ever sees them again. And that's not the reality of what we're seeing in our community right now. We are seeing boyfriend trafficking, we're seeing familial trafficking. So these are all cases where the victim trusts their offender. And so there's a lot of overlapping between domestic violence and human trafficking then because those two things do not happen in silos. Traffickers and domestic violence abusers use the very same tactics to maintain power and control over their victims. We deal with a lot of things in a day that are scary and that are discouraging, but behind those doors this morning are 30 people that are full of these amazing ambitions and passions to not only want to create preventative measures so that we can stop these acts from happening, but also creating really strong resources for victims to come forward and really strong collaborations because across the state we're all dealing with the same issues, but we all have different innovative ways that we're doing it. And so being able to come together and talk to your people and other people who understand what your missions are in a day and the people that you're working with, it really helps create a strong system of support for victims of trafficking. But really the goal is to bring these key stakeholders together, these partners together, and to be able to facilitate that dialogue to understand what are the needs, but also what do we already have in South Dakota to meet those needs and how do we just make that connection? Um, and so it, for them, it's really about as we walk away today, just identifying a few first steps for them to follow up and knowing that this is just one step, a really great step, but also there's so much work to be done, which we're excited about to continue to support. But also we know that this community knows itself the best. We know that they know what their resources are, what their needs are. And so we want to support them in, again, what they have identified as their next action steps.